So far in this course, we've created an HTTP server and listened on a port, but we haven't done anything with HTTPS. At this point, it's going to be worth it to add on HTTPS support to our app, and so we're going to do that in this lecture. The first thing that we're going to need to do, though, is create an SSL certificate that we can use within the app to actually facilitate the SSL handshake and so forth. In order to create the SSL certificates, I'm going to use OpenSSL. Uh, if you don't already have it installed, you can download it easily. I'm going to place these SSL certs inside of a new directory called HTTPS. And then CD inside of it. All right, now the command I'm going to use is very long. I'm going to spell it out here, but if you want to just copy and paste it, go ahead and download the code for this lecture. Look inside the HTTPS folder, and there is a text file called keygeneration.txt. You can just copy that, paste it in your console, especially if you're on OS X, and uh, it'll create two different files, a key.pem and a cert.pem. Okay, the command is OpenSSL. rec dash new key RSA is 2048 dash new dash nodes dash x509 dash days 3650 3650 days and then the key out, the key that we want to come out is key.pem. And the cert that we want to come out, which is just with the dash out key, is cert.pem. So one more time, open SSL rec dash new key, RSA2048, dash new, dash nodes, dash x509, dash days, 3650, dash key out, key.pem, dash out, cert.pem. Just to clarify here, this should not actually be a capital K. This should be a lowercase k. All right. At this point, you are going to be presented with a bunch of questions. You can answer them any way that you want, especially for this example. In reality, if you're building this for production, go ahead and answer these questions truthfully for the business that you're creating this app for. OK, so the two letter code for the country for us is US. The state or province name is California. The locality is San Francisco. The organization name is purple. The organization unit name is purple. The common name. This gets a little complicated, especially when you're working on localhost. For us, uh, we're just going to write localhost. But if you're doing a production website, for example, you're doing example.com, and you want this SSL certificate to work for www.example.com and normalexample.com, it will depend on who you're getting your SSL certificate from. For most SSL certificate creators, you can just specify example.com and they'll make sure that the cert works for www and normalexample.com. For us, since we're creating a local host and this is a self-signed certificate, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to write the word localhost in there. Email address, hello at uh, purple.com. And that's it. So at this point, if we look inside this directory that way, or if we go ahead and explore with Adam, we can see that we have a cert.pem and a key.pem. All right. So what we're going to do is now use these two files in order to create an HTTPS server. The first file that we want to modify is going to be config.js. Rather than having one port that we listen on, we actually need to now listen on two ports. As you may be aware of, HTTP and HTTPS conflict with each other. And so we are 
need to separate out the ports. On most applications, HTTP is going to happen on port 80, and HTTPS is going to happen on port 443. Don't read too much into what those numbers mean. That's just the convention that has evolved over the years that is uh, popular, and that is what most web browsers expect. If you're running a localhost application, it really doesn't matter which ports you choose, but on production, you might want to choose 80 and 443 if your application is facing the world. Okay, so for us, we want to now, instead of having port 3000 for staging, we want to have two different variables, HTTP port, which we'll leave at 3000, and HTTPS port, which we're going to change to 3001. Similarly, for production, we want to take away this port at 5000 and replace it with HTTP port at 5000 and go ahead and add on HTTPS port that's going to be, as you guessed, at 5001. We'll save that file. Now remember in the index.js file, we have used that port variable. So we need to go ahead and update the places where we've used that. But this is also a good time to refactor this file in general because we're going to be creating two different servers that have the same basic functions. And so rather than coding up this entire server block twice, we want to refactor it so that all we have to do is create this server in HTTP mode and then pass rec and res to another function that will actually handle the meat of the logic. And then we can add on an HTTPS.createServer function and also have that one just pass rec and res to that same function that'll handle the meat of the logic. So rather than having two different create server functions that both have a whole bunch of logic, we're going to trim down this create server function, create another HTTPS create server function, and have them both pass their rec and res to a third function. That'll all make more sense in a second. Before we create the HTTPS part, we want to just go ahead and refactor the HTTP part. Then it'll make more sense when we want to add on the HTTPS. As I mentioned, we want to create a function that's going to handle all the unified logic for both the HTTP and the HTTPS server. So we are going to call that function unified server. and it's just going to accept a rec and res as normal. All right, now what we want to do is take the entire meat of this function up here, starting from where it gets the URL, all the way down to the end, take that out of this function, and put it inside of this one. Now, this server, rather than doing all that logic itself, is just going to pass its rec and res to unified server. Now, it's worth pointing out that unified server isn't actually doing anything with the port. It is handling the requests that come into the server when they come in, which is after the point that the server has already started listening on a port and has logged out which port it's on. So we don't need to update anything in unified server. We do need to update where we have started the server. So rather than config.port, we want to have config.htp port. Then we want to say the server is listening on port config.htp port. And we can get rid of the environment name because we know that's working. Okay, now you can see how this is coming together. Rather than having a huge function up here, we have two very small functions, one that 
instantiates the server and one that starts the server. So we can change the comment here to simply say we are instantiating the HTTP server. And then we are starting the server. Okay, so now we can see what we need. We need to create a second server, an HTTPS server that listens on a different port, listens on 3001 or 5001, and then passes the logic to that same unified server function. To do that, we're going to need a different module than HTTP, and predictably, that module is called HTTPS. All right. Now, I'm just going to put in comments to outline what we're going to be doing. We want to instantiate the HTTPS server with one function. And then in another function, we're going to start the HTTPS server. At this point, these server names are going to get confusing. If we have one server called server and the other one called something else, it's it's kind of weird. So let's go ahead and change the HTTP server so that it is actually called HTTP server instead of just server. And then to start it, rather than calling server.listen, we're going to have to call HTTP server.listen. All right, now we have a blueprint for how we're going to create the HTTPS server. I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy the start function from HTTP down to HTTPS because it's going to work almost entirely the same way, except we're going to change it to HTTPS server dot listen config dot HTTPS port and then console log out that the server is listening on config dot HTTPS port. All right. Now, of course, the HTTPS server variable doesn't exist yet. So up here, we need to create it. But this is done a little bit differently than the HTTP one. But I'll start with this HTTP version, and now we'll make some modifications to it. HTTPS server equals HTTPS dot create server. We're actually going to add in some variables before the callback. So we're going to call it HTTPS server options and then put in the callback, and then it's going to call unified server. But we haven't defined HTTPS server options, so let's go ahead and work backwards from there. Let's create that object. HTTPS server options equals an empty object. All right, we're going to want two keys on this object. The difference between starting an HTTP and an HTTPS server is that the HTTPS server has a whole bunch of options related to, you guessed it, HTTPS and SSL. The two that are important and are required for creating a server are the key and the certificate. The key and the certificate are what allow the HTTPS encryption and decryption to actually happen. So if we don't specify those, it really can't create an encrypted server. So we're going to create a key and we're going to create a cert. But we have to define them in something. We actually want to define these two variables or these two keys as the contents of, you guessed it, these two files that live in this HTTPS folder, the cert.pem and the key.pem. So we want to read those two files in synchronously so that their data can be the value of this key. In order to do that, we are going to require the file system module, fs, that comes built into Node. So we're going to say var fs equals require fs. And the function that we're using on the fs module is read file sync. With much of the Node API, you'll notice that there are sync versions of a function and async versions of a function. For many cases, you want to use the async whenever possible. Since we want these files to be read in synchronously, the sync version of this function makes sense. So we want to call fs dot read file sync. 
and then we're going to specify the path to the file. In this case, we're specifying the path to the key file. So dot slash HTTPS, because remember, these are living up a directory inside of an HTTPS directory, key.pal. And then for the cert, we want to do the same thing, fs dot read file sync dot slash HTTPS cert dot pem. Okay, and that's pretty much it. We are now reading in these two files. So HTTPS server options dot key will actually be the contents of this file and cert will be the same. We're passing these server options to the HTTPS server when it starts so that it can actually create a secure server when it starts up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear out my terminal. We have saved these files. Now we're gonna go ahead and start the app. Um, I do have a small typo up here, so I'm gonna change require uh, to make sure it has an E on the end. Before you start the app, make sure you get back out of the HTTPS directory. So CD up a directory. Make sure you're in the base directory for your app before you try to start it. I'm gonna go ahead and start it with node index.js. All right, now I have two logs coming to the screen. The server is listening on port 3000 and the server is listening on port 3001. I'm gonna kill that, start it up again with node env equals production. And the server is listening on 5000. The server is listening on 5001. Now we have two different servers, technically, that are listening on two different ports, but passing all the meat of their logic to this unified server function. So in reality, these two servers are identical. They are working the same way. It's just that they need to listen on two different ports. Any client that wants to connect over HTTP can connect on the first port. If they want to connect on HTTPS, which for obvious reasons is highly recommended, they can connect on the second port. All right, now we can move on to the next lecture.